Welcome and thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption with Kelly Rourke Scary and me, Ron Rains, where we delve into the issues of adoption from every angle of the adoption triad. Do what's best for your kid and for yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to take care of that kid and that's not fair. And I know that my daughter will be well taken care of with them. Don't have an abortion. Give this child a chance. All I could think about was needing to save my son. My name is Kelly Rourke Scary. I am the executive director, president, and co-founder of Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, the Donna K. Evans Foundation, and creator of the You Before Me campaign. I have a bachelor's degree in family studies and human development and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in school counseling. I was adopted at the age of three days, born to a teen birth mother, raised in a closed adoption and reunited with my birth mother in 2007. I have worked in the adoption field for over 15 years. And I'm Ron Raines. I've worked in radio since 1999. I was the co-host of two successful morning shows in Prescott, Arizona. Now I work for my wife, who's an adoption attorney, and I'm able to combine these two great passions and share them on this podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Look for AZ Adopt Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking with somebody who has worked at the Department of Child Safety, formerly known as Child Protective Services. She now works with us here at Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, and we want to talk to her about what the differences are that she has seen for a birth mother who is got her own DCS involvement and is choosing between the route of going through with her adoption plan or whether she is going to choose to work with DCS in an attempt to uh, reunify with her child and regain custody. So I'm excited about today's interview. Uh, I think we're going to all learn a lot and let's see what she has to say. I'm so excited that you have agreed to talk with us today in the podcast. I think so many of us in the adoption world and those that are considering joining the adoption world can learn a lot from you. So you worked with the Department of Child Safety, formerly known as Child Protective Services, and now you have come into the private adoption sector and work with Building Arizona Families. And I'm really interested to know what your take is on two aspects of this. One, what do you think the benefits are for a birth mother who has an adoption plan and with uh, a private adoption agency and then has DCS involvement and has to make a choice between DCS involvement and continuing with her private adoption plan? Just being, having that assurance that they will be able to still receive updates on baby's health, um, pictures on how much they've grown, um, and just accomplishments throughout their life that will may not be available to them um, by continuing with a plan with um, DCS. And do you see a lot of, or have you seen in the past situations where a woman chooses DCS with, you know, the initial intent to reunify and then it just doesn't go as planned for her? She doesn't follow uh, the plan that DCS has put into place and therefore has a closed adoption because... DCS, to my knowledge, doesn't offer open adoptions. They don't. And I've seen in many cases where moms um, will start a plan with DCS and be told that they need to participate in various services in order to reunify with their children. Um, And they do participate in their services. And then it's another service that they need to participate in. And eventually it comes down to they, the child has been in care for too long and we can't continue to offer the services. So then rights are terminated. And what happens when rights are terminated? When the rights are terminated, you lose any sense of being that child's parent, um, essentially. So you don't, you don't get to 
see them or talk to them if they are placed outside of your family. Um, you don't get to engage in any of their treatments or any of their activities that they're doing. Um, essentially, it's like erased, uh, which is a hard for a lot of moms. So in your experience, have you seen moms start to work the plan and find that the plans are too challenging, too difficult, um, more than they're able to be successful in and not proceed? Yes, I have. Um, a lot of times the plans are not clearly stated. So it's like the mom thinks that they need to do one thing and they do that, but then it's like, okay, we don't need you to do that. We need you to do this. And so that's discouraging for people because they think they're on the right path and they think that they are doing everything right and they find out that they're not. And then they come to the point where they're like, why am I even going to try anymore? Under that's understandable. I get that. Are a lot of the children that uh, DCS has to take custody of, do a lot of those children wind up with family members or do a lot of them go into the system, meaning foster care or a crisis nursery or uh, a group home? What, what in your experience do you see? Um, a large percentage of them go with individuals who are not part of their family because they have such extensive backgrounds on family members and sometimes families can't pass that. So we have no other, they have no other choice than to place them into a non-family home um, in many of the cases that I've seen. Okay. And again, I totally understand this is your experience and what you've seen. So I totally understand that. Now, with regards to women that are choosing adoption for their child, you have, you know, started recently with our agency building Arizona families and the options that are given to the mothers when they place their children to stay involved in their children's life do look very different than if they were to choose to follow the plan uh, presented by the Department of Child Safety. Is that correct? That is correct. What do you think, and this is just speculation on, on your part, what do you think the draw may be to a mom who has a solid adoption plan every intent to place this baby for adoption. And in the hospital, a DCS worker comes in and says, we're taking custody of the baby if you do not follow through on your adoption plan. And the mom is then, you know, kind of blindsided by DCS coming in. And then instead of saying, staying on course with their solid adoption plan, they then detour and choose DCS. What, what do you think is the is the the root of that decision? I think the root of that decision is that when DCS um, does come to the hospital, they make it seem easy and they make it seem quick. So they give this assumption to the birth mothers that as long as you do this, you're going to get your baby back. And a lot of a lot of moms think, okay, I'm going to get my baby back in thirty or sixty days, when that's not what happens. Okay. What, what is, and again, this is just, you know, ballparking, but what is, what is, are some situations that you've seen in terms of how long it can take for a, a baby to be returned to a mom who is working a reunification plan? Genuinely, um, I've seen it last for about 18 to 24 months. Wow. And during that time, the mom has to complete things um, like is it true, like drug testing, potentially, if that was one of the issues? Yes. Uh, parenting classes is another one, I believe. It is. Um, she has to attend all of the visitation that is set up. Yes. And are there any other things that are kind of typical in a parenting plan? I mean, I know every, every plan is developed according to the issues as to why the child was removed, but what are some other kind of common ones that you've seen in plans? A lot of plans include um, a psychological evaluation so that mental health can be addressed, stable housing, and the means to support the child. Is there any advice or if you could say something to a mom that is deciding 
between continuing with her adoption plan and following through on that versus having, you know, choosing the DCS route and, and having her baby go into state custody? I think the advice that I give um, is to ask the DCS worker those hard questions that they may not want to answer. Um, and and then meeting with your case manager at the adoption agency um, to weigh the options because it's, it's not as cut and dry as what DCS um, provides to you when they're at the hospital. So what are some of, can you tell us what some of those hard questions may be? Just so that anyone listening may be able to, you know, get some more assistance with the choice that they're making. What makes a stable house? Um, because a lot of times that's not, that definition is not provided. And what's stable to DCS um, may not be stable to the mom and vice versa. What the mom believes is stable and adequate is not stable to DCS. So like a f- asking them, what exactly are you looking for as far as stable housing? How long do I need to be free from substances? Because addiction is a very hard process. So what exactly do I need to do as far as that addiction? Um, What support systems can you provide to me that the adoption agency can't? Different questions like that. Also, in regards to like mental illness or mental health, Um, when they say that you need to follow all mental health recommendations, well, what if they don't agree with them or what if they're not working? What do I do next? Because everything isn't laid out and it's not cut and dry. That's really good to know. And I think that there may be some definite misunderstanding. I can see how the definition of a stable housing environment could be very different. I mean, it could vary. There could be degrees. One thing that I'm learning from you is that, like you said, it's not really cut and dry. It's not, there's not, um, you know, if you check every box in this plan that I'm giving you today, that that doesn't necessarily mean that the child is going to be returned to you in X amount of days. And that makes a lot of sense on, on both sides, because I can see maybe from DCS's point of view, and I'm speculating on this, that you know, as things change in the birth mother's life, that the plan would have to accommodate those changes. So that would make sense that there would be additional things that she would have to do or provide in order for her to have her child uh, return to her. So it sounds like it potentially could be a very steep uphill battle. I would agree. Yes. Okay. And so I would say that the advantage in working your adoption plan, you know, cause that's what, what my specialty is, is, is helping women with their adoption plan is that, you know, what you're getting into. Everything is laid out. It is um, defined. There isn't uh, stipulations in terms of, okay, you're going to get letters and pictures for the next 18 years. You don't have to have stable housing or a job or uh you don't have to go in and do certain things in order for that to continue. It is part of the agreement that is initially made. So basically it sounds like in order to stay permanently in your child's life, choosing open adoption is the most secure way to do it without there being risks that you're taking. Would you? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So you'd agree with that. Okay. In your experience, do you think that, when, when women are at the hospital and, and they're blindsided by DCS showing up at the hospital and talking with them and, and telling them, you know, that now, you know, no matter if you choose your adoption plan or not, you're not taking the baby home. The baby's either going with the adoptive family or it's going into state custody. Do you think that that loss of control over them being able to make a decision about whether they're going to parent or place a baby for adoption kind of rattles them a little bit and makes them feel like they need to to gain back some type of power and control because it's all just been ripped away at that point. Yes. And they're trying to hold on to something. At DCS, were you kind of trained to give these birth mothers a little hope and say, you know, if you work the program, you can get your child back and, or was it just kind of human nature to give them that hope? You were trained to to give them that hope, to tell them, you're, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to get your baby back. And how often do you think you saw it that you, they did get the child back? 
Um, my time with DCS, I have only honestly seen two families um, be reunified with their with their children. Wow. That must be disheartening. It is, yes. Especially because when you are working with the families, you want them to be successful. You want them to achieve what their goal is. And that's why I think adoption is such an amazing option for them because it provides that guarantee that working with DCS cannot. Yes. Is there anything else that you want to add or say um, in terms of what you can share that would be beneficial to somebody who's making that hard decision? I think the main thing that I would share with them is to talk with their adoption case manager and build that relationship with the adoptive parents before um, so that you know when DCS comes that you're making the right decisions. I think that's really good advice. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm sure you have a busy day, so we won't keep you anymore, but I really appreciate your advice and your knowledge and your experience. And hopefully this will help a lot of women that are in in this position. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you for having me. Also, just by way of disclaimer, we want to make it clear that the views, opinions, and insights expressed by our guest are those of our guest alone, and they don't necessarily reflect those of Building Arizona Families as an entity or those of the Birth Mother Matters and Adoption podcast. We have a pregnancy crisis hotline available 24-7 by phone or text at 623-695-4112, or you can reach us on our toll-free number at 1-800-340-9665. We can make an immediate appointment with you to get you to a safe place, provide food and clothing, and help you get started on creating an Arizona adoption plan, or just give you more information. Check out our blogs on our website at azpregnancyhelp.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by looking for AZ Adopt Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us. Birth Mother Matters and Adoption was written and produced by Kelly Rourke Scary and edited by me. Thanks go out to Grapes for letting us use their song, I Don't Know, as our theme song. Join us next time on Birth Mother Matters and Adoption. For Kelly Rourke Scary, I'm Ron Rains, and we'll see you then.